Right then, this is MSI's latest monster of performance gaming laptop, the GE76 Raider. Now, of course, depending on the region you're in, there's a bunch of slightly different config options available. Uh, the Canadian version I've got here is set up with an Intel i7-10870H, a beastly 16 gig, 155 watt RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, a 17 inch 1080p display with a 300 hertz refresh, and some crooked stickers, which haven't bothered me at all said no one ever. The design's still pretty gamery, but it's not crazy looking. I like this titanium blue color. It's subtle, but still eye-catching, if that makes sense. And I love the raised MSI Dragon badge. It's a really nice touch. Now for IO, we've got three USB-A ports, a couple of Type-C ports, neither of which are Thunderbolt 3, but the one on the rear does support DisplayPort 1.4. There's an audio combo jack, SD card reader, network port, HDMI, and mini display port. And I like that MSI's located all the chonky cable ports on the back, like the power cable and HDMI. Just puts less stress on connectors and keeps things out of the way and looking clean. The 1080p IPS display produces good color, although I was really expecting to see higher coverage over the Adobe and P3 gamuts. Max brightness is fairly disappointing because we're seeing below industry standard levels at 252 nits. So while it's okay for creatives, it'll be more than enough for watching content and of course gaming with a three millisecond grade to grade response time and 300 hertz refresh rate. We've got a full size Steel Series keyboard with some shortcuts across the function row, including one for MSI's Cooler Boost 5. So basically just tap at any time you're gonna put the system under load. Uh, the keys have about a 1.5 mil travel distance, which is nice, and they've got decent tactile feedback to them. There's per key RGB backlighting, but at max brightness, it's quite a bit dimmer than what I'm used to from other brands. So that's a bit of a downer. Uh, the touchpad's a bit of a negative for me personally too. It's a bit small for a deck this size. It doesn't give a great finger glide experience compared to what I've tested in the past, even though it's a glass surface, and there seems to be a bit of pre-travel, like I can't tell if it's just loose or if it was just designed that way, but it bothers me either way. <laughs> now at this point I'm pretty sure you've noticed that light bar at the front of the deck, well, while I'm not a fan of that sort of gemstone or prism design if you will, I think MSI did a good job with the diffusion, only problem is, just like the keyboard, it's still pretty dim at max brightness. The speakers sound awesome. Uh, music, content, gaming, it all sounds great. Sound leaks out the sides and from the top of the keyboard deck, but the only speakers I could physically find are the two on the sides facing down with openings from the large resonance chambers facing outward. Now, MSI has them listed as two one watt speakers plus two watt woofers, so maybe they're sandwiched in the same resonance chamber? I don't know. It's a strange setup, but it sounds great either way. MSI has given us a couple of ways to overclock and control cooling through the Dragon Center app, so if you set it to extreme performance and click the cog icon, you can boost both the core clock and memory up to 200 megahertz. But pro tip, don't toggle the cooler boost mode, otherwise the fans will be running at max even when idling, so instead just hit that cooler boost hotkey on the keyboard when you need it, like I mentioned earlier. And if you set it to user and click the cog icon, for the GPU, you can either use the drop down menu or click the cog and adjust your boost. And then if you set the fan speed drop down option to advanced, you can set your own custom fan curves for both the GPU and CPU. Anyways, taking off the bottom panels, super easy. 13 large Phillips screws and you just peel off the back. No prying tools needed. Uh, the motherboard layout's awesome. Everything's user facing, so RAM, the two M.2 drive slots, the Intel AX10 wireless card, that huge ass battery, and the super easy to access GPU and CPU for repasting if you wanted. Okay, so let's talk about thermals and gaming performance. Now under load running both A to 64 and 3D Mark Time Spy, we do hit that thermal throttling brick wall from the CPU at 95 degrees Celsius, while pretty much stuck between 3.9 to 4 gigahertz, with the GPU looking a little warm at 77 degrees, but those chunky heat pipes and fans seem to be keeping it in check. Uh, fan noise isn't actually all that bad when maxed out, and since the speakers sound good and get plenty loud enough, you can almost drown out the noise if you didn't want to wear headphones. I'd still recommend headphones though. <laughs> and as you can imagine, gaming performance is awesome. The GPU seemed to peak at about 71 degrees, and of course the CPU felt right at home maintaining that high 95 degree average, but frame rates are fantastic even when running games at maxed out graphic settings. And while the 300Hz display might be a bit overkill for AAA titles, it'll be great for esports. Folks, this laptop just 
crushes games. Now, battery life isn't terrible, but it's not great considering the large 99.9 .9 watt hour capacity. Running the modern office battery benchmark from PC Mark 10, it reached just under five and a half hours at 70% brightness in Windows balanced mode with super battery mode enabled through the Dragon Center app. I think a better target would have been seven hours considering the battery capacity and all the battery saver features enabled, but I guess that's gaming laptops for you. By the way, you might want to keep that 280 watt power brick off of surfaces that can melt easily because it gets hot as balls. Uh, anyways, the GE76 is a rad gaming laptop. It's expensive at 3,700 Canadian or about 3,000 US but it's hands down the highest performing gaming laptop I've ever reviewed. I would have preferred a slightly more subdued look, brighter RGB and a firmer touchpad, but aside from those personal opinions, this is a rock solid gaming laptop choice. If you can find one in stock, cause I sure can't. <laughs> But I think that's gonna do it for this one. So if you like the video and wanna help out the channel, do me a solid and don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Uh, thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.